All right, it's time to talk about batteries once again. I was supposed to do a bunch of videos for you, but due to circumstances out of my control, I am not able to do it. So uh, I'm just gonna do this one video that I can do for you. So one of the battery packs that we were playing around with last week was uh, these right here, which were uh, 48 volts, 14S, and they have the HB2 cells. These are the super duper power cells that can do supposedly 30 amps uh, each, right? So it's a 4S, so 30 times four, that's 120. So supposedly this module here, according to the cell specs, should be able to do about 120 amps. Um, now, is that the continuous or is that the peak rating? I would want to say that's the peak rating because that's a lot of power, right? And these little, you know, come on. I don't know. Well, I don't know. The best way to find out is to actually load it with a uh, big load, right? This is four kilowatts of uh, grid tie inverters. Probably, well, I don't know. Each one can do, I think, about 30 amps. So three, six, so this could potentially do 120. We're going to start kind of slow. The, the problem is that this is a small battery, so I kind of have to do it kind of quick and then, you know, because it'll run out of juice very quickly. I mean, it's only 300 watt hours, right? So it doesn't hold a lot of energy, but it can give it to you all at once kind of thing, right? So let's run it. Uh, and then we'll measure the, uh, well, the amperage. What do we do? 400 amps here. Is it DC? Yeah, 400 DC. There we go. We'll put it there. Everything's connected. We'll just have to connect these to the grid, and then this thing will start. We'll put the thermal camera in here so that we can see. Okay, so let's start this test. All right, let's start the test. So we have two of these inverters connected already, so we should see about 60 amps, maybe 50, 60 amps, something like that. Uh, this is just to check the voltage. We're at 57 volts, 50, 58 volts is fully charged. Okay, so there's 20 amps. One of these boards, one of these inverters, it's pulling 900 watts. What about the other one? Okay, here it goes. The other one now is ramping up to 400. So there we go, 44. Okay. 45 amps. Let me connect the other two. Remember, we got to do this quick because this battery will run out of juice rather quickly. Okay, so 900, 900. We'll get these two to do 900 also. 45 amps. And then we'll check the temperature because that is the best way to know what the battery is doing. If it's, if it's struggling, it'll show it in, all right, 80 amps. So let's look at the voltage, 47 volts. So it's 57, so it's sagging about 10 volts at 80 amps. That is probably about the, uh, oh, that's, that's probably the, 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 the continuous that it can pull, about 80 amps probably. Let's put the thermal camera. Whoa, look at those cells. Those cells are looking mighty hot there. What, uh, what is the temperature? Uh, 40. Okay, they're not hot yet. They're warm. All right, this is reading all the the ambient. Let me see, can I get this uh, a little bit closer? Clearer. That's about as clear as it's going to get. This is a super low res camera. So there we go. Uh, we're still putting 84. 80, yeah, 84 amps. 
So 900. Oh, this one's only pulling 300. And this one's 800. Oh, wait a minute. The amperage. Wait, the voltage is down to 44? Okay, that's really sagging a lot there. Yes, 43, 43. It's supposed to be 58. What's 44? 42 is completely dead, right? Oh, okay, so 44. Okay, so the battery is kind of warm now, 51. Okay, so as soon as we see 42 volts, Okay, I'm hearing crackling. I don't like that. What's the temperature still? 57. Okay, I was hearing crackling from the battery and that makes me nervous. <laughs> so it got to 57 degrees really fast. And let me see here. pretty hot so I mean we were almost there I think right now it's uh, resting at 49 volts 49.5 right so uh, that's around 3.5 per cell so that's a little bit less than nominal so about 50% uh, the battery uh, less than 50% of the energy of this battery is still here right so we didn't remove uh, all the energy i want to say maybe 55 percent or 60 percent of the energy we remove that quickly because we're really loading it so um, i i got nervous because they start crackling what happens is the crackling is an indication that maybe pressure is starting to build inside a cell now these cells are among the most safe in the world because they have that rigid canister so if the pressure builds inside the cell then they have a vent a valve that will release and then they will vent, right? And so they won't, they can't explode, right? Um, but once you got a cell that vents, then that's it. Your does that battery is not completely dead, but now it's compromised. You know that's never going to be a hundred percent anymore after that. So that is a clear indication that you have gone too far. And so maybe, in my opinion, eighty amps continuous on this pack, that's too much. I've run this test off camera before at seventy amps. And at 70 amps, that, none of those problems happened. The temperature stayed lower than this, and uh, I was able to remove the entirety, 100% of the energy of the battery. And so I, if I were designing a pack, and you know, I would say stay below 70 amps, amps uh, continuous on this one, even though the cells are rated for like, you know, 30 cells, 30 amps per cell or something, which is 120. But that's just momentary. I think that's peak. That's for like one or two or three seconds or something like that, right? Just to start up a motor or something like that. Uh, but continuous, yeah, I would say uh, stay below 70. Now, I have an idea how you can, uh, what you can do with this. And let me show you, let me clear the table here and I'll show you in a moment. Okay, so we're in the battery business and we get all kinds of different things that are related to batteries, including stuff like this. These are, yeah, I think we have like a dozen of these uh, rack mountable case, right? These are very reminiscent of the, uh, those like in the 90s and the 2000s, we used to, I used to be in the sound system and uh, amplifiers 
would ship in these uh, rack mountable cases, right? But now these days, a lot of this batteries, the home batteries are starting to pop up in these rack mountable, 19 inch standard rack mountable cases, right? And so a lot of stuff is like lithium ion phosphate and this is our stuff, right? So I'm like, what if we were to put See if we could put some of those modules into here. These modules did not come in here. This, this is not where these come from. I just took this box, which is empty, uh, removed a few pins that are inside there like these. These are uh, standoffs that they had some other equipment in here, other battery. This is a battery box, Sonin uh, 2500LFP. So it's a lithium ion phosphate battery. And I'm like, well, what if we, can these fit in here? And I'm like, oh, they look at that, they fit. They fit really well. So if we were to put them, for example, this way, right? Here are the, uh, well, here are the, uh, the terminals, I mean, they're all like right here. So if you flip them around, the positives here and the negatives here, and all you just have to do is run a bus bar this way, and then a bus bar this way, and then uh, run uh, maybe like a PCB here that ha and then you can connect the little, because remember these have the, these have these things, right? This is our, all the balance leads, right? And so if you just run a PCB here with a, that connector to that, the mating connector to that, uh, which is right here, right? Then you can connect all of these, one, two, three, four, five packs in parallel and then packs in parallel. So imagine, right, we just did the test and uh, at 80 amps per this module, they, they got too hot, but at 70 amps, at 60 amps, at 50 amps, these will run nice and cool right i mean they'll get warm but they don't get too hot and so they'll there's, there's uh they're safe to run right so imagine this could be a 48 volt uh rack mounted battery capable of 510 150 200 250 amps right you could load this uh by the way it's got this little uh these are the terminals. I don't know. Can are these capable of 250 amps? Uh, maybe. I don't know. That'd be a nice test. So I was like, what if we put some of those in there? Because we have a bunch of these modules, and uh, just do this experiment. Like run, make our, our own uh, 48 volt uh, rack mountable battery pack, capable of 250 amp continuous so here's my question to you are you interested in that kind of project should i do that we only have about a dozen of these so it's not like i could do this make a bunch of them and everyone could buy one right it's, it would only be a few of you guys but the thing is that we are getting a lot of this stuff that will allow us to to make this sort of stuff right like for example Battery boxes are really, really expensive. And that's the reason why I don't have a full system that I can push, right? Remember those ones that I was doing here? Now these are like discontinued or something. They're really hard to get. And I'll, I experimented with like doing my own, right? Like ordering material and then you just like do things. And in fact, the, the next video that I'm working on and the last one that I did where it was a, a complete like beginning to end, Power, DIY power wall thing, it, it included a video where I showed you how to make your own battery box because they're too expensive to buy, like an electrical box. You're talking about 500 bucks just for the metal box before you put your battery in there, right? And so for a lot of the DIY crowd that is looking into building a DIY battery for their house, they're like, wait, I have to pay 500 bucks for just for the box? It's like, that's a bit too much, right? And so, that's the problem that the the casing right the enclosures for batteries are really really expensive except if you reuse some of the stuff then it becomes really cheap and that is the case right now we have these huge inverters that just came in they're three phase they're about 25 kilowatt inverters uh a lot of them are clearly labeled that they're faulty and so they're they don't work 
And so a lot of them are, there might be some good ones in there, but the problem that I'm having is that, well, the, you know, the average person does, can't use a three phase, you know, five, 25 kilowatt inverter. So I don't, I don't know if the market exists for those, for me to go and do a bunch of tests and find the good ones from the bad ones and, you know, do all this work to see, and then, and then have uh, three phase inverters uh, that are grid tied that nobody really needs. You would have to have like a industrial commercial building uh, property or something. And then you want to, you know, fill it with uh, solar panels and then you would connect these inverters. But because I, at least some of them are uh, faulty, I, we can just gut those, those boxes, right? Cause they're big, big boxes. <laughs> And we could just fill them with batteries. I mean, these are already rated to be outside. So they're sealed, they have sealed compartments, they have fans in them, they, uh, they're they tough. They're made out of uh, like steel, some parts of steel, some parts of aluminum. And I'm like, well, we can sort of do this sort of stuff, but like on a big thing, right? So if you're interested in that sort of stuff, let me know, right? If there's a lot of you guys that are would be interested in figuring out, because it takes time, all these projects, right? I have to sit there and measure and do the thing, design, the boards design the things design look for the fasteners and the th you know, it's like quite a bit of work right but if there's enough interest out there with you guys and figuring out how to how to harvest one of these uh, boxes right that it's an inverter but in this case you could put it up in your wall and, and it instead of being an inverter it's a battery right and i could i think i could they're big enough that i could probably put like 10 kilowatt hours worth of uh batteries in this form right with our boards and the thing or whatever right so yeah let me know in the comments because if you're interested in this we'll do this little project just to get our hands dirty with that and then we'll follow up with that other those big boxes and those we have more we have about 50 of those or whatever and i have to figure out what i'm gonna do with them because they're occupying quite a bit of space in my warehouse and as the new loads of batteries come in then after that i'm like hey i need that space we need to get rid of the stuff and so it becomes much more right now i'm good i have space but eventually here uh, next month or the month after that i might be itching to get rid of those things right and instead of i want to be able to that's what i do here try to find useful things to do with all this stuff that has some value right if you're clever enough if you're you know you can if you can use your imagination and how to do it so that it doesn't just go to the scrapper uh and or or worse to the landfill to trash and then the landfill or whatever right uh, so that's that's what we're doing here and so we can reuse some of this stuff then it, the better for everyone i think right so put it in the comments if you guys are interested in those sort of projects I will be able to gauge if there's any interest and then just go for it, right? All right, thank you guys. We'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.